What about Al-Aqsa? How do we talk about Al-Aqsa? Allah talks about this land very specifically and talks about this masjid very specifically. Allah calls it Al-Ard Lati Barakna Fiha. The land that we have blessed from within. وَبَارَكْنَا حَوْلَهُ And we have blessed what is around it. Not just blessed the land itself. We have blessed what is around it as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it in the words of the prophets that came before. الْأَرْضْ الْمُقَدَّسَ The holy land. And there is something very specific about that. Imam Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah says it is called al-muqaddasa, the holy land, because, because it is al-mutahira. It purifies you of all of your sins. When you go to that land and you pray in that land, a place where Ibn Abbas anhu said, the land of the prophets, not a single foot span. Not realize when you're watching those images of stun grenades, and you're watching those images of bullets, and you're watching those images of settler extremists chanting out that this is theirs and desecrating people in that land. And you see that there's not a hand span there that a prophet did not stand in. Think about that. A prophet has stood in every single hand span of that land. And so every part of it is holy. And what they brought is even more sacred and more holy. And Musa alayhi salam, there is a reason why when he was dying, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَسَأَلَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُدْنِيَهُ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ الْمُقَدَّسَةِ رَمْيَةً بِحَجَرِ He was prohibited from it due to the actions of his people. But he asked Allah, Oh Allah, his dying wish, imagine Musa Islam's dying wish was let me die as close to it as possible. رَمْيَةً بِحَجَرِ Where I could throw a stone and it would reach that land. So if it hurts us that we are prohibited from Al-Aqsa, if it hurts those of us who are Palestinian in particular, who can't visit the land of our parents, while colonialists and their enablers can, then know that Prophet Musa السلام, the most spoken about man in the Qur'an, also was prohibited. And the Prophet السلام, said, if I were there, I would show you his grave, تحت الكثيب الأحمر, under the red dune, where Musa السلام, was granted that request to be as close to it as possible. And as Muslims, while we pray to Mecca today, and we know that this was the first Qibla of the Muslims, there's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just appoint Al Ka'bah to be the Qibla in the first place. He could have done so in His glory and His majesty. But Allah wanted to honor that place, and Allah wanted to honor our Prophet. The Prophet leading the prayer towards the Qibla of Al Aqsa and leading the prayer towards the Qibla of Al Ka'bah shows that he is Imam al-Mursaleen, the Imam of the Prophets and the Messengers. It was a way of honoring our Prophet and it was a way of honoring those places. That Al-Aqsa should always remain in the hearts of the Muslims even though they pray towards Mecca. When they pray, their hearts are attached towards Al-Aqsa as well. To the point that the Sahaba who prayed towards both Qiblas, like Anas who used to say, لا يبقى ممن صلى القبلتين غيري. No one remains on the earth today who prayed towards the two Qiblas, except for me. He could have honored himself by saying, no one lives amongst those that prayed in Mecca and Medina. No one lives amongst those that accompanied the Prophet some here and there. But he mentioned it as a specific honor, that I am the last person that exists on the face of the earth that pray towards both the Qibla of Al-Aqsa and towards the Qibla of Al-Masjid Al-Haram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us a, a trip to both of them. Allahumma ameen.